Welcome to Draga, where we tell a dumb story with even dumber drawings. I am your drawing master, Caldwell Tanner. Hi, I'm Nathan. I play the halfling rogue, Legsy Shortstack. I'm Jacob. I am Regina, the tiefling bone mage. And I'm Julia. I am your strong punch girl, Roxa. <laughs> <laughs> the Aladrin fighter herself. Y'all, it's time yet again for another beautiful, exciting chapter of Draga, Dungeons and Drawfee. Yay! Before we get into it, I do have a, a recap prepared. Are y'all ready for another episode of Recaps for Peace Theater? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been more ready for anything. <laughs> okay, uh, I could not get Laura Dern. She's busy, Aww. unfortunately. Aww. Dern. Dern it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got uh, her imperfect clone, Dora Learn. <laughs> She's going to do the recap for us. Yay. She sounds exactly like me. It's weird. Huh. So anyway, uh, here's what happened last time. Deep in the laboratory of the deceased goblin inventor known as Daryl, the ladies book club, as well as Daryl's partner, Francis, are accosted by a shape-shifting life form known as Dennis. After the defeating them with a series of tactical dates, Dennis gives the girls a tape of security footage that reveals the killer's identity. Turns out there are actually two culprits a clattering bone clown named Pukunichi, and a mysterious hooded figure wearing a bone mask that looks suspiciously like Bone Regard. However, before the girls can ask Dennis any more questions, the bone clown reappears and kidnaps Francis. Now, in order to find Francis and finally get paid for their services, the girls <laughs> head back to Old Baby Gus's bar for more information. Once there, the ancient infant reveals that the robed figure who gave them the Bone Regard skull was once Daryl's butler. It seems someone hired him to assassinate Daryl, and now he's gone into hiding somewhere in the nearby Mega Plaza shopping center. Having leveled up their looks and refilled their inventories, the girls now speed over to the plaza to track down Daryl's butler and at long last discover the whereabouts of the wicked skeletal jester, Pukunichi. Wow. Nice, dude. I wrote all that out. I, I want to get right into it, but before we start, I need to clarify something. A lot of people, a lot of commenters brought this up. Specifically, the Madam Hatter said, but guys, the rule from episode nine was that if someone rolled a D20, Paul Blart had a magical girl transformation. So without further ado, before we go any further, I need to let everyone know that from this point on, Paul Blart has become Maho Shoujo Maldoka Magikop. <laughs> <laughs> Update your record. Yes! <laughs> The transformation is complete. I've never seen anything like it. He does then settle right back down on top of Jeffers. Absolutely. Yeah, he's still in your possession until another 20 is rolled. Okay. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to head over to Damien Quaza's Mega Plaza. Yay. <laughs> For those unfamiliar, it is a huge strip mall with every store you can possibly imagine. Those that saw our secret Twitch episode might remember the Build-A-Blade workshop that is also located in Damien Quaz's Mega Plaza. So I've got a mission for you this time. Oh boy. It's very simple. Y'all have to basically just search for this butler. And the butler, of course, has taken the form of Regina's Lego Gimli. Yeah, yep. buddy. <laughs> Uh, the, the poll has spoken with 42.68% uh, of the votes. Uh, Regina, you have won. Uh, Lego Gimli is the is the form that this monstrosity has taken. Uh, and somewhere in this mega plaza, uh, Lego Gimli lurks. Of course, Lego Gimli has a real name, which we shall learn in just a bit. <laughs> but for now, what I want you all to do is basically just uh, explore. It's kind of a free period episode. Oh, oh, fun. Nice. So let's go ahead and roll initiative. Here comes mine. 12. All right. All right, big money. Five, that's small money. <laughs> <laughs> Julia? All right, and I got 15. The biggest money. Nice. Do you want to go first, or do you want to defer? From what Rox understands is that uh, we're, just, we're just exploring the space, right? Yeah, so you're exploring the space. There's uh, a lot of ways you can do that. You can talk to store clerks. You can investigate shops. You can... Uh, Yell at a bird. It's kind of whatever you want to do. Uh, you know what? I'll let my friends uh, have first uh, first hand at this. All right. So, Nathan, I think you had the next highest roll. Do you want to explore the Mega Plaza? Sure. Is this the drawing? This is the drawing. We're drawing what we're doing. I see. You're drawing what you're doing. Tell me. I want you to paint me a picture, literally, of what you were doing in this Mega Plaza in your hunt for Daryl's butler. Right. Okay. No, I, de <laughs> I defer. 
I defer to Regina. <laughs> Regina's up, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Gina time. It's Gina time, motherfuckers. <laughs> Gina, go find your Lego man. <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere in this labyrinth of shops lurks Lego Gimli. If you need a little inspiration, you could just draw Regina going into a store. I think that, like, I mean, you got, y'all got to remember, you know, this is your summer break. Y'all probably would be here hanging out anyway. So just like go to one of your favorite haunts. Like, talk to the people you might know already or, like, explore a new shop. This plaza has anything. Now, I recognize that this is a slightly more open-ended challenge, but I wanted to give you all the, the freedom to do do whatever you want. Like, you know, this is um this is kind of our uh, Calm Before the Storm episode. Yeah, I mean, I figure Regina is the most popular girl of the crew, so she's probably the most experienced at doing the mall. Yeah, I imagine that like Legsy and, and Rox are probably a little overwhelmed by the mall, but uh, Regina just strides forward confidently. The mall is huge to Legsy. Rox has already left the room. She's gone to go to Annie Ann's <laughs> from some cinnamon sticks. See, you could have just said that. That's great. <laughs> Super hungry. <laughs> All right, so you're hitting up the pretzel stand. Um, okay. Oh, oh, wow. This is a big wide shot. I love it. Yeah, we're really we're really pulling out. I want to get a good shot of this uh, this shop that she's uh, going into here. Okay, cool. I'll let you reveal that in in due time. While you do that, Roxa, you're at the pretzel stand. Which pretzel are you getting? Uh, the cinnamon sticks. Oh, damn, the sticks. Do you get a dipper sauce with that? Nah, just you know, straight up. Straight up, no dippies. <laughs> no dippies. Extra stickies, no dippies. That's what the clerk says when you you ask for it. He's like, no dippies. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Roxa just looks at him. <laughs> Roxa just shakes her head. Yeah, awesome. What about you, Legacy? What are you? What are you doing once you enter this labyrinthian mall? Well, I think I'm. Uh, I'm examining the legs of the mannequins there, <laughs> just noting the different craftsmanship, trying to see if any of them came from from my dad's workshop. Do you think that Quadzo supplies the mannequins to this particular plaza? Uh, Yeah, definitely. They. I remember big bulk rush orders we had to do back when I was uh, w- was helping my dad out in his shop. What's the rival shop? What's the rival mannequin company in this world? So you got Quadzo's mannequin shop. Yeah. And then you've got, ooh. Danikin's mannequins? Yeah, you got Danikin's mannequins uh-huh. who just like... <laughs> I don't think that's his real name. No, certainly not. But he's definitely a wizard, so... <laughs> his full name is Anakin Danikin. <laughs> Anakin Danikin. Uh, and his slogan is, they might come to life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's for sure, he's a necromancer, and I'm pretty sure that he just makes all of his mannequins out of uh, skeletons. It's kind of like when you go to uh, get oysters and like there might be a pearl in there. There might still be a soul left in one of these mannequins. <laughs> yeah, the full name is Danikin's Necromannequins. Oh, there it is. Very good. It's definitely a moral gray area that he operates <laughs> in, but uh you know, some of some of the fun, you know, like um like your hot topics, your fantasy hot topics. Yeah. The name would not change. Yeah. They use Quadzos or they use uh Danikins? They use the Danikins because they like that edgy skeleton aesthetic. Oh yeah, and I feel like those mannequins could like just double as like the clerks. Like you, you go up to one and you say, "Oh, this looks. I, I kind of like this top. This is a really cool uh, Vash the Stampede T-shirt. I really want to buy this from this fantasy hot topic." Uh, and then the mannequins like certainly, and they just get off the stand and go over and ring you up. Yeah, Trigun does exist in uh, <laughs> in Fantasyville. We've established that anime exists. Right, right, right. But it's exactly the same. Yeah, I, I like that anime is sort of the link between worlds. <laughs> Maybe that will come into play. Anime is the binding force of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> across all Earths, across all planes. I have the power of God and anime on my side. <laughs> exactly. Listen, <laughs> what is heaven but infinite anime? <laughs> Okay, so this looks like a formal wear shop. It is, uh, in some sense, a formal wear shop, but it's more than that. Is it like a tailor shop? Is this like where you go to, like, is there like an information broker that lives here? I mean, uh, according to, like, what you've told me, this mall is incredibly large and has basically anything uh, you could want. Exactly. So it has to get into some pretty specific shops. Is this a shop for butlers? This is a butler supply store. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Now, do we have a name? Do you have a name ready to go for this? It's called the Busty Butler. (laughs) (laughs) 
That sounds like a tavern name. I guess probably every name in a fantasy world sounds like a tavern name. Sure. The Busty Butler. Oh, I love it. And it's a, uh, how do you do a cursive uppercase B? I think it's just a big B. I think it's just a, yeah, there you go. Yeah, That's going to do it until I look it up later in the final draw of this. <laughs> I just wrote Butler. It's just the Butler? The Butler. <laughs> well, now it's just the Butler. The Busty is implied. <laughs> That's that's like regulars could know to call it that. Uh huh. That's what it used to be called. That's real classy. Yeah, they added the bu the busty was kind of like in the '90s. They had kind of a phase where they tried to be a little like sexier. Yeah, a little edgy. Yeah, they went back to the original. So yeah, let's do a little um little role play. I will I will play the role of Chad Butler, <laughs> the store owner. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're uh, Gerard oh. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. All right. You enter the store. You see Gerard Butler. <laughs> he greets you warmly. Regina, good to see you again. Hey, Gerard. Uh, listen, I wish I could say I was here on, like, you know, pleasure, like usual, but uh, I got business today. Ah, uh, yes. What business have you in the busty butler? <laughs> have you, uh, you seen any butlers in here lately? Yes, yeah, a lot of butlers, in fact. 500 butlers as of today. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. I guess this maybe wasn't the best lead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been looking specifically for uh, a, sus a suspicious butler. Got a bit of a uh, a bit of a Lego face, if you know what I mean. Ooh, bit of a Lego face. Do you have a picture perhaps you could show me? Do I have a picture? I guess I have the drawing, right? Yeah, you, you have a picture. I'll, I'll clarify that. Uh, Gregory Hamilton printed out pictures for you. Because yes, he has a Polaroid function. Wonderful. So yeah, you you hand a picture of uh of Lego Gimli to Gerard. Gerard looks at it. Good God! <laughs> That's a fair response, Gerard. Is this a real person? Is this a prank, Regina? Is this one of your famous pranks? I wish I could say that it was. Unfortunately, as far as I know, that's this guy's actual face. Uh, now keep in mind the source I got this information from is maybe a bit shaky. Hmm. You know what? Something's coming to mind. I think, uh, I think I've seen this this man in here once or twice before. He was buying uh, doilies and uh, coasters. I think um oh I'm trying to recall. His name was something like uh, Crouton, I think. Crouton. No, not Crouton. It was either Crouton or Clisby or Baby Hater the Squeeze. It was Klasky Supo. <laughs> uh, he kind of goes through a couple of names. He pulls out his Rolodex and says, oh, wait, wait, wait. I remember. He flips through the names. Let's see. Sparky5869. No, no, no. Beanie Azar. Oh, yes. Here it is. His name was Hollis Quirt. Hollis Quirt. Yes. The butler Hollis Quirt. I mean, I will say, Gerard, that is a, a very butler name. <laughs> yes. It's proper, but a little whimsical. You could get advice from him if you could stand to look at his face. <laughs> so can I get you anything while you're in here? Um, do you have any good, uh, like, cloaks? Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, you come <laughs> to the wrong store. We do not have cloaks. Ah, oh, shit, okay. You'll need to go to the, the crusty cloaksman. <laughs> um, which, which uh, aisle is that on? That's going to be, uh... Aisle uh, 745 ZZZ. The aisles in uh, in the mall are actual floating aisles, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they are realms all to themselves. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess I'll uh, I'll head over that way. Thank you, Gerard, for this information. You're quite welcome. Um, I have one more question for you. Yes. Do you do you have any information about where this where this man might be butlering these days? That's a great question. Um. Now let me go get my dice so I can roll it. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. I left them in the other room. Apologies. <laughs> All right, so the way this is going to work is um, each of you is going to get a clue. Hollis Court is a bit of an elusive figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this dice. You got a seven, and then I'm going to pull up this list of random names. Wonderful. So I pulled up this list of random names, and I'm looking at it. There's 20 random names on this list. So I rolled a seven, which corresponds to Rebecca Estes. Gerard, thanks for a moment. Well, last time he came in here, he mentioned something about Rebecca Estes. I don't know if that's a person or perhaps a store. Possibly a store. I think there's a store by Rebecca Estes' name. I don't know what, what they sell, but if you head towards that store, perhaps find a directory, 
You might be in luck. All right, Rebecca Estes. Sounds like a high-end fashion designer. You notice that while you're talking, Gerard has started polishing your shoes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm not paying you for this. Oh, man, that's dangerous. Your shoes have a lot of spikes. Yeah. Ow. <laughs> I've injured my hands quite, quite badly. Well, time for me to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bleeding quite a lot. Would you like a biscuit for your trip? No, thanks, dude. See you later. Okay, I'll use it to soak up the blood. All right, so that's... Leg one, um, Regina, you can just keep wandering, um, but we're going to go, I guess, to um, Nathan now. Okay, reverse order. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we split up when we entered the mall, right? Yes. So Legsy would not have this information about Rebecca Estes. I think y'all have like um, some sort of cell phone or like some sort of fantasy cell phone or like a, a group thread going. Maybe it's an actual thread. Yeah, we have an actual thread. You have a magical thread that you hold out in your hand and it can display words. It like twists itself into the shape of words. So you get an um, an incoming group thread from uh, Regina that has the, the phrase Rebecca Estes, like comma shop owner. So you know that maybe that's where you should be heading towards now. Okay, so I'm heading towards Rebecca Estes. But if you want to do any investigations on your way, I would be I would be happy to see it. Legsy had an idea. I like it when that happens. She's going to, to follow her hunch. Okay. Now, Nathan, while you're, while you're filling this out, while Legsy is walking, uh, I want to fill in some of the details of the mall for you. Yes, please. So you pass a couple things on your, on your journey. You pass by a cell phone accessory kiosk store, but for whatever reason, it appears to be abandoned at the moment. There's a closed sign, but you can see the cell phone cases and uh, Bluetooth headpieces they still seem warm. There's kind of a uh, a lingering warmth on them. Gross. But it doesn't seem like anyone is uh, attending to them at the moment. I don't think I want a warm Bluetooth earpiece. <laughs> they get a little hot. <laughs> you want them a little hot. That's how you know that they're like really getting the, the good Bluetooth. Get a little spice on them, boys. Getting them good, too. You also see uh, a job board, and on it is a posting for the camp that Tiffany works at. Oh, nice. Mm. I remember Tiffany. Tiffany, of course, your, uh, your dwarven friend who is um, away at church camp. Uh, there's actually a picture of her. Uh, it says, uh, Camp Pelor, find the light inside of you. And it's her, you know, helping a kid do a zip line or something. <laughs> I miss Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to send her a message on the group thread? Yeah, let me shake out a thread to Tiffany real quick. <laughs> okay, what are you going to say? It just says, just says, miss you. <laughs> the group is a lot less religious without you. <laughs> Should we get her something from the mall? Maybe like a little something from a kiosk or something? Yeah, Roxa, while you're looking around, do you see anything that uh, that Tiffany would like? No. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I like that you send that to the, the group thread. You're like, should we get something for Tiffany? Uh, and everyone's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Do you have any ideas? And you're just like, and you just don't respond. <laughs> <laughs> you ghost. Gotten distracted again. <laughs> Regina, do you see anything that you think Tiffany would like in the mall? Well, there's kind of one of those like uh, the equivalent of like a sweet spirit store, you know, a Christian bookstore type of deal. Hell yeah. But uh, for uh, all the fantasy religions. <laughs> do you think there would be like a veggie tale equivalent for followers of Pelor? Probably. What do you remember what <laughs> Pelor's deal is? Is he like what's his what's his godness about? They're like the, the, the god of light and healing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, um, and I think that like they're associated with the sun, and they are the uh, the opposite of the uh, the Raven Queen, which I believe is the goddess of death. The Raven Queen sounds rad, though. To be fair, yeah, I feel like uh, Regina would be very into the Raven Queen. That's what I like about your group is like you clearly worship uh, opposite deities, and yet you found common ground. <laughs> yeah, we can respect each other's beliefs. So maybe you get her like a cell phone charm or like some sort of uh, little like plush plush Pelor. Yeah, sure. You think she'd like this mace? I found her a mace. <laughs> Roxa, she doesn't want any maces. We've been over this a million times. Only you like maces. But everyone likes maces. If you want to buy the mace, just buy it for yourself. It's fine. I don't. Do you want to buy a mace? No. You don't have any money. You can't buy a mace. <laughs> no. If you if you had money, then that would defeat the purpose of this entire mission. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, you're in the the religious bookstore. What do you what do you buy her? As I'm walking around, I see kind of a little, maybe unofficial kiosk set up in a dark corner of the bookstore Yeah, that has some uh, illicit um, fantasy religion fan arts. <laughs> and I I find a really good Paylor X Raven Queen uh, drawing. Oh, shit. 
So I definitely, I get that, and I'm, and I'm going to send that to Tiffany as a show of our friendship, you know? You fucking got her religious doujinshi? <laughs> I got her religious doujinshi, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that is like high sacrilege, but it's like absolutely her deal. Yeah, it's totally her jam, and I know that because we're close. Oh, my God. Do you like snap her a, a pic of it <laughs> on your thread? <laughs> it's, I wave the thread at it, but nothing happens. Yeah, doesn't happen. I, I think that you only got T9 on that thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't do pictures yet. <laughs> your dad didn't spring for the, the deluxe thread. No, not at all. Okay, but what about this this mace? <laughs> you she's like this one? That's the same mace. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's got different color wrap on it. <laughs> I mean, that those are her colors, it's true. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think that the doujinshi is a, is a very good gift. Um, can you mark that down, that, that you have that now? That I have uh, doujinshi? That you have one uh, Pelor X Raven Queen uh, smutty doujinshi. <laughs> now let's, let's, let's catch up with Legzy. Looks like, oh, this is very good. Legzy remembered that Lego Gimli had a, had a well-manicured beard. Yes. And so she went to the most popular barbarian beard stylist, uh, mm -hmm. In the mall, Harry's Hack and Slash. Harry's Hack and Slash. Now, you, you know as well that the butler's name is, of course, uh, Hollis Quirt. So you can use that name. This is Harry that we're looking at right now? Uh, I believe this is Harry, yeah. Okay. Give him some more hair. Now, I already used my gruff man voice, so I'm going <laughs> to switch it up for Harry. Hi, Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Harry. How's it going? A night uh, on the town turned into sort of a... A weird job where uh, I, I haven't yet gotten paid, and so I was hoping that you could help me out. So no trimmies today. Oh, no. N uh, well, I don't know. Paul, do you want a, a touch up on your stash? <laughs> I don't have, the, the issue is I don't have any money because I haven't yet been paid for my services. Harry takes one look at Paul Blart's magnificent mustache. I'm sorry, uh, Mahos Jojo, <laughs> Maldoka Magic Hops. <laughs> uh, resplendent mustache and says, I must shape that. <laughs> so he does it ad gratis just because Paul Blart's mustache is so pure and wonderful. So yeah, I guess Paul Blart is now in the barber chair. He's got the, the frock on him. Uh, he's still glowing majestically as a result of... <laughs> oh man, I should have I should have drawn that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would have been pretty good. We can do a drawing of it later to, yeah. to put in here. We'll, we'll insert that. We'll slide that in for sure. Paul Blart's getting a, a manicure, like, on the house. I think this is one of those barbershops where, like, you know, they'll give you a beer while you wait. So I think you and like, Harry are, like, kind of slurping one down. Yeah, so I ask Harry, uh, say the name one more time. Hollis Court. Hollis, how do you spell Court? Like, QWERTY. Okay, I ask Harry if he's got a, a customer by the name of Hollis Court, and if he's seen them recently. Hmm, yeah, they they came in for a trim. Said that they had just come into a lot of money and uh, opted to get some, some nice highlights put in their beard. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I've got a copy of the picture as well. And I ask him to uh, to note where the highlights have been put. <laughs> Not where you think. <laughs> <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> great. Yeah, he's been uh, living it up across the plaza. He gave me a great tip. Um, Yeah, I, I haven't seen him in a while, but uh, I think he was headed towards, uh, let's see. So I roll the dice, I get a two, and now I go to my... Random adjective list. Let's see, a two. Horrible is the adjective I'm given. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was going to uh, Rebecca Estes Horrible. Uh, I can't remember the full name of the store, but uh, I know that it's uh, Rebecca Estes Horrible something. Great. So uh, you want to head over there? That'd be great. This will only take three more hours. That's incredibly <laughs> helpful, Harry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Of course. Tell your dad I said hi. Oh, of course. Yeah, Quadzo... Uh... Well, yeah, dad. Dad as I as I call him because <laughs> he is my dad. Such a normal girl. Yeah, like a like a real normal girl like I am. If I see him, hopefully I'll I'll be able to tell him I got paid for services rendered and then I can also tell him that that you say hi. Uh, he always he always comes home looking great after your trims. It is an honor to shear him. <laughs> <laughs> to attend to his wonderful feet. Yeah, he's got he's got some real hairy feet. Are y'all finished up with uh with Magic Blart? <laughs> yeah, we can just call him Magic Blart. <laughs> That's a better shorthand. He seems reluctant to finish to uh to stop kind of crafting Paul Blart's beautiful mustache. 
But uh, he realizes that all good things must come to an end, and he uh, gives Paul Blart a lollipop and sends you on your way. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. I'll stop by again soon. See ya. As you as you leave, you do the the mannequin waves at you as well, and that seems suspicious. Uh oh. <laughs> Wait, wait, this guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even have an arm. <laughs> yeah. He just sort of wig wobbles. Yeah, give him an arm real quick. <laughs> you didn't see the arm before, but it pulls out an arm and waves at you. And you're like, hmm, that looks like one of Danikin's. And, but you decide not to tell your dad. It's got cartoon logic. <laughs> it only uses has the arm when it needs the arm. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So uh, you pass along the information in the thread that you've learned. And uh, now uh, it's time for Roxa to, uh, to do her, her share of exploring. Yeah, this will go well. <laughs> so you um you've been pounding cinnamon sticks. Have you found any other and you were you were shopping for maces? What have you been up to as of late? Just wandering. Just wandering. Cool, cool, cool. I'm looking around. You're looking around. We're so close to knowing exactly where to go. So you know that you're looking for a store that is something along the lines of Rebecca Estes is horrible blank. You're not sure what the last bit of that is. So if you wanna, you know, ask around or just kind of seek out a map. Anything, it's up to you. The world is your oyster. The canvas is your rainbow. While you're walking, you pass another bulletin board with a giant missing flyer for Daryl. And you can see that it, there's a little uh, a little section below with a kind of a rippable pieces of paper at the bottom. Uh, and it says, Adventurers Wanted, but uh, nobody has taken any of the... <laughs> The so wait, this is for Daryl, the, the one we know is dead? Yes. This is an old flyer. Uh, you can see that Francis posted it a while back. It's gotten yellowed, and it's a little damp from rainfall. <laughs> That's real sad. Yeah, no no takers on that <laughs> one, I guess. <laughs> no takers. So, yeah, no, just a little flavor. Nothing nothing really, no no revelatory facts there. Just uh, <laughs> y'all are doing a good thing for Francis. <laughs> All right. So I want to check in with uh, Regina. What have you been up to uh, while the others are walking around? So after I bought my doujinshi for... Uh, Tiffany, I had to go to Regina's favorite store in the mall, uh, Spencerion's Gifts, nah. <laughs> which is like, it's a little bit edgy. You know what I'm saying? Like you go in and it's a little bit on the adult side of things. So Regina's like walking around Spencerion's and she's finding like like gifts that are like a lollipop, but it kind of looks like a, like a dragon's wiener. <laughs> And she's just having that's so that's so wrong. It's so wrong. Oh my god. And she's just having like a real laugh, having a real giggle. That's so fun. And there's like all sorts of like wizard orbs and stuff in there. Now, Regina, you do have I would be willing to say that um if you wanted to to buy something, uh I'll give you I'll say that you had a little pocket change to buy this Dojinchi. It was it was cheap enough. But uh I mean y'all all have items. If you want to barter for new stuff in any of these stores, you you're welcome to, of course. I don't remember what I have for the most part. <laughs> you have uh the IGN dive, a friendship bracelet, uh a cryptic diagram, um, bone regard, Jonathan, and a commemorative date photo. I could finally get rid of Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> We haven't heard from him in a while. Spencerion's Gifts is my favorite store. Everything's so <laughs> dirty and 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 honey and and silly. Never mind. I like Jonathan. <laughs> I remember why I have Jonathan now. Aww, <laughs> he's a good dude. We have fun. I'm on your shoulder. <laughs> I'm your shoulder to cry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are, buddy. Regina is eyeing this. Uh, this. Hey, don't give me the cold shoulder. Nope. Okay, now you got to stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will trade you for this statue I'm looking at of a, a skeleton wizard riding a flaming horse. That's pretty rad. I'm not gonna lie. That's a rad statue. And they kind of mixed it in with one of those like electro ball sort of things. So like. Oh, I love those. On the end of his staff is like an electro ball, and when you touch it, like the lightning moves around. Yeah, I, you know, I don't have hands, but. Uh, You'll just have to take my word yeah, for it. Yeah, I've seen it with other people with hands, and uh, it looks real fun. <laughs> yeah. It's like a real fun hand activity. Maybe someday I'll get you a body. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm not going to be needy. Does it ever make you mad that I could do that at literally any time and I choose not to? I cope with humor. <laughs> <laughs> right, Gina. Yeah. I'm going to offer you uh, an opportunity. An opportunity? Do you want to do a crime? A crime? Oh, shit. Wait, Caldwell... We're at a mall. Is is this a shop opportunity? Is is this a shop opportunity? <laughs> you say that so loudly, and the store clerk looks up at you, throwing my plan into jeopardy. <laughs> and I'm just like, nope, no shop opportunities here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in this store. You're eyeing this uh, majestic uh, wizard statue statuette. Yeah, wizard skeleton riding a flaming uh, horse. 
dragon. Absolutely. Yeah, made of pewter? What's it made of? It's made of uh, pure adamantium. Oh, nice. It's actually unbreakable. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's convenient. Yeah. Do you want to try and steal it? Listen, here's the thing about <laughs> Regina. She knows that crimes are incredibly cool to do. <laughs> uh-huh. So the answer is, is yes, yeah, she absolutely wants to try and steal it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> give me a roll. I'm going to give you a roll. Here's Regina's uh, sneaky, sneaky thief roll. Ah, I have some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you have some bad twos. I have some bad twos in that it was a two. Oh, my God. <laughs> you rolled a two, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, with a two, hmm. <laughs> you pick up the statue, attempt to put it in your pocket. It falls, and because it's so heavy, it falls through the store. <laughs> Just right through the floor creating a huge hole. The floor becomes unstable. A huge, like, display case of fake vomit and poop falls into the hole. Sick, dude. Um, the fire alarm goes off. The sprinklers are going off. The store clerk rushes over and says, what did you do? I'm sorry, I have to call this in. What do you do? I summon an army of skeletons and run away. <laughs> Just an army of skeletons, huh? I summon an army of skeletons and I point at it and I say, it was him. <laughs> <laughs> and they just sort of clatter. <laughs> and they, they clatter about attempting to explain themselves. <laughs> I'm going to have to, you guys wait here. I'm calling this in. <laughs> wow. Roxa has met just a, another beautiful man. Yeah. This, this tends to happen. Look at this beautiful, giant, horned man. Yeah, Roxa, do you want to fill us in on... Uh, on who this is? You'll know soon enough. I mean, it's it's amazing that you ladies don't know already. Those horns look uh, familiar. How does Demon Johnny feel about this? I guess you're you're competing against him, and Demon Johnny uh, respects that. Let me fill this out. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a look. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, she's loving oh, she's it. in her element. Uh, he's in his element. Everyone's in their element. Everyone's having a good time. All right, yeah. Do you, do you have a... <laughs> he's plushing. <laughs> is this a... Y'all got a swing? What's going on after this? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, maybe. Man, maybe it's because you're not Aladrins or something, but he's a famous fighter. A famous fighter. Yeah, and I, I went to go get his autograph, and like, I went to get his photo, and he was like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to just stand for any normal photo. We got to do like a cool oh. pose. Oh. So who's this? Is this like your one of your favorite fighters? That like yeah. Oh wow! He was just at the mall doing signings at the sports store. <laughs> uh, Lady Hooflocker. Uh, yeah, Lady Hooflocker. What's this hero's name? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Rox is stunned. So starstruck. It's amazing that you guys don't know him. Well, why doesn't uh, Regina uh, Legsy? Why don't y'all try and remember who this is? Ooh, okay. It, so it's... like basically Roxa sent us like in the thread like she's just like yeah. flipping out and she's like he's here he's here the the guy the famous the guy the fighter yeah yeah like she <laughs> can't get the words do, like, out uh, impromptu charades because she's beside herself um, and this like never happens so you're like who who are you talking about and you have to do you have to guess who she's talking about all right Nathan I'm gonna give a first name you want to give a last name yeah, yeah yeah his first name is uh uh hurt okay and his last name is. <laughs> You got this. Locker. <laughs> Hurt Locker. <laughs> Hurt Locker, the famous fighter. Okay, so in this mall, we have Gerard Butler and Hurt Locker. <laughs> and Harry. The stars are out tonight. <laughs> I didn't mention, but Harry's last name is Styles. Okay. <laughs> because God, that a, makes sense. He's a, he's a Harry Styler. Yeah, God. Harry Styles really missed his calling, didn't he? <laughs> Could have been a barber. All right, so this is this is Hurt Locker, uh, the famous. Yeah, is he a fighter? Is he like a bodybuilder? What's his deal? He's like a bodybuilder. He used to do some fighting, and then he got really hurt one day. The other guy totally cheated. Uh, to be fair, no, d does Hurt Locker? Did he do like fantasy MMA? Yeah, now he does like bodybuilding because it was too risky. Can I offer an alternative last name to Locker? <laughs> See if you guys like it better. Sure. Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, no, that's better. <laughs> Hurt Reynolds is very good. 
if it was bad, we were going to make you live with your stupid decision. But no, Hurt Reynolds is super Can good. Can we say that like his his in ring name was the Hurt Locker? There it is. That's like what you enter when you when you wrestle him when you grapple with him. Yeah, you're getting into the Hurt Locker, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that voice. And then he slams you into a locker. It yeah. was his like wrestling finishing yeah, move. Yeah, he just most people use a, a folding chair. He just has a full size gym locker. <laughs> yeah, he shoves you in it and then eats it. <laughs> <laughs> he is a cannibal. <laughs> oh, is this the picture? Oh I, oh, I love it. Oh, this is so good. Oh, it's on the on the phone. So are we establishing that um, Roxa does have a just a normal cell phone <laughs> that we're opting not to use in, in favor of this thread? Well, y'all don't have y'all don't have a phone. It's someone else's phone. I've commandeered someone else's phone oh, yeah. in the mall. <laughs> Roxa just stole someone's phone. I'm like, oh my god, it's Hurt Reynolds. <laughs> you got to take a photo with what? <laughs> Your phone? <laughs> Send it to my friends who also don't have phones. So I guess, yeah, no, well, all right, what you do is, like, you get this phone, uh, and I guess we'll say that you have um, Gregory Hamilton with you because you you have the most storage space. So uh, Gregory Hamilton can print this photo for you. Oh, nice. Yay. I'll have this in my wallet forever. Oh, what a commemorative photo. Who is that big hunk? I would love for him to put me in the hurt locker. <laughs> Wouldn't we all, Greg? <laughs> Can't believe none of you know this man, this wonderful athlete. Definitely miffed that we don't know him. You've, you've given yourself, of all the things you've drawn for this show, Julia, I feel like arm wrestling is one of the hardest. Yeah. <laughs> Just the way those fingers overlap. <laughs> Who won? Uh, Well, we didn't actually compete. He didn't have time. Okay. Oh, this was just like a staged, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it would have gone just, all night. It was just for the photo. So it's like, you know, it was one of those like, take a picture events. So while you're talking, you do ask, you do ask Hurt, Reynolds about the store and about um, Hollis Quirt. And he mentions that he's definitely seen Quirt around. Uh, Quirt often hangs around and bets on his arm wrestling matches. He's always just kind of like waving fat stacks of cash around and just, you know, really being generally obnoxious and a little a little drunk and noisy. But so, yeah, he's heard Bert gossiping uh, nearby as he does his arm wrestling. It turns out that Quirt was actually a, a neck ring mancer in the Bone Circus. A mm. neck ring mancer? A neck ring mancer, yeah. A neck ring mancer. Of the three bone circus. It's good. It's a good pun, Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to slow down to get the praise, but thank you for giving it to me. <laughs> 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 Regina, I imagine you've seen a Bonham and Bailey uh, circus <laughs> from time to time. That's, that's also very good. <laughs> thank you. Of course. I mean, the only time when I was a kid that, you know, my, my dad was willing to leave the uh, the torture chambers. Mm hmm was to go catch Bonham and Bailey's. <laughs> yeah, so um and he used to he used to work for them and uh he always I mean like uh Hurt, I've got two a character named Hurt and a character named Quirt and it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> uh Hurt is often mentioned that he's overheard Quirt, Hollis Quirt saying that uh if anyone needs a, a bone creature summoned, uh he'll do it for a price. So uh it seems like a little information has been added to your uh, collective registries about Hollis Court and his backstory. Regina is just baffled that she could be making money off of summoning bones. Like, this, I could have just been doing this. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll for you, Julia. I feel like you also mentioned uh, that you were looking for a specific store that you've heard that Hollis hangs out in. So let me roll this dice. It's a 16. And now it's time for me to finally pull up my random noun list. My Indian's pretzels are hanging out in the back. She didn't know your sticks. Your sticks. She pa she panicked and she put it on the uh, on the table. Your stickies, no dippies. Yeah. No dippies. Zero dippies, y'all. I found the noun, and ooh, it's a doozy. It's a doozy, David. <laughs> so once you take the commemorative photo and uh, Hurt tells you all he knows about Hollis Quirt, you ask him if he's heard of a uh, Rebecca Estes's horrible something or other, and he says, "Oh yeah, Rebecca Estes's horrible snails." <laughs> <laughs> of course. I remember. Yeah, those horrible snails. They, they were all the rage. Everybody used to trade them yeah. back in elementary school. Eat them, trade them, throw them at people. <laughs> they suck. Oh, those snails were so horrible. I hated them. Yeah. Lexi got pretty into them. Oh, yeah. I had at least 500, and I yeah. hated each one. Yeah. <laughs> They're the snails you love to hate. So, <laughs> uh, And strangely enough, it was... The the snail store was right next to the Annie Ann's. So like Oh yeah, that makes sense. Y'all are gonna have to double back. Okay. Oh 
Julie, I'm just noticing the tattoo. It's a locker that says hurt, spelt with an E. It's very good. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, please add to your inventory one commemorative photo of you and your idol, uh, Hurt Reynolds. <laughs> The fantasy MMA fighter. So yeah, you text the thread. You say, I got it. Hollis Quirt is hiding at the at Rebecca Estes' horrible snail store. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. The last place I think to look. Yeah. Man, I just like wiped those snails from my memory. <laughs> because I think some of them crawled inside my brain and wiped themselves from my memory. It's very likely that that happened. Yeah, they're horrible snails. I want to hear more about the snails, but while you tell me more about these snails, uh, <laughs> I am going to take over and draw a picture of this store. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. boy. A Caldwell drawing. A Caldwell draw. A rare Caldwell drawing in real time. Yes. It's a little trick I'm using so that we don't have to do more drawings after we finish the show. Yay. <laughs> All right. Draw that store. All right, so I'm going to draw... Uh, Rebecca Estes' horrible snails. This storefront. Tell me about these snails. Yeah, I remember they, they came out when I was in, in middle school, I think. Elementary school, like late elementary school, early middle school. Middle school is when Legsy sort of got real into them. She didn't really get it in elementary school. Oh, yeah. Regina was in early. She liked to be like in on all the trends. Right. So she could be like the cool one. Yeah, I think Legsy... Didn't quite understand why they were so popular, but then in middle school, when they were sort of less popular, Legsy got really into them. She's always been a little bit behind on the trends. And yeah, you collect you collect the horrible snails. They keep coming out with new horrible snails. Each one more horrible than the last. Yeah. And they're real snails. It's not like they're like little plastic snails. Oh, no, they're for, they're real. Every snail, but you know, they, they're magically generated. I think they're homunculus snails. Okay, yeah. So there are more rare and common ones. Yeah. But they're they're just as drippy as the real thing. Oh, they're very drippy. Some of them more drippy. Absolutely. Some, some of them have like an acidic drip to them that I don't think I don't think Quadzo appreciated much. Do you think that maybe if like you if you lose a snail encounter, you have to eat the other person's snails? You know, depending the different house rules. I mean, that's definitely at tournaments you have to do that. Okay, yeah, for sure. Which then sucks because the other person loses their best snails. I'm just gonna keep drawing turbo until y'all tell me to fucking stop, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's definitely the mascot horrible snail. <laughs> just a spiky turbo. I don't know, it seems like a pretty good snail. Like, this is the one that people would hope to get, you know? They're like, well, I know there's at least, like, one decent snail in there. The problem, yeah, but this snail, this snail just is, um, he's just never shuts up. <laughs> he's got real, real bad opinions about, uh, <laughs> fantasy politics. Roxa has no idea what these snail things are all about. For sure this is a trend that Roxa did not participate in. Yeah, it didn't make it to the Feywild. I was too busy collecting, uh, fantasy MMA trading cards. Which of course that does stand for mixed magical arts. I just I just need yeah. to get that out there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Clarify you. that. I, I had a whole collection. I had like a little book. I kept all of my cards in in pristine condition. I have one that uh, still lives in my wallet. Uh, my favorite one. Is it Hurt Reynolds? It's not Hurt Reynolds. Um, oh, but Hurt Reynolds is probably my second favorite. Your favorite MMA fighter was of course Orbus the Unbeatable. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just a giant floating orb of uh, of pure hatred. <laughs> he was just a giant uh, fist, actually. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's like he's like Master Hand, but he never like splays out. He's always just like punching. Big Manny. Yeah. All right, so I gotta I gotta add in the title here. Do we come up with a, a name for for this titular snail, or is this Rebecca Estes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Rebecca Estes is is the the witch that summons these snails. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and that's why it's so. Um, collectible is because like she's customizing them all like you go in and she takes a little of your blood you can get augmented ones they, she does just have the generic ones that she makes yeah, they come in, just in booster of, boxes yeah. yeah exactly if you have enough money they come in blind boxes and that's like what that is is a box that has been given eyes and then the eyes have been removed yes <laughs> <laughs> they do still have a mouth and that mouth is screaming a lot yeah there's a definite sense of loss uh <laughs> inherent to the box my eyes <laughs> and then you shove the the snail inside the monster box's mouth all right so we've got the the storefront here what was y'all's favorite snail growing up i had a garden one hung out <laughs> in the backyard you didn't even do horrible snails you no. don't get to talk about this conversation fair that's fair 
<laughs> Regina was always bitter because she tried to get Roxa into horrible snails and she wouldn't do it. Nah, I just didn't get it. <laughs> no, like once you understand the meta game behind it, it gets it gets really compelling. It was too complicated. There were too many snails at some point, and they had too many weird names, and then there were elements or something. It was too much. I feel like Legzy definitely did like competitive tournament play yeah well if i could sneak out um and and make it because a lot of the tournaments had a had pretty steep buy-ins oh yeah (laughs) and uh quadzo quadzo was not a fan of legsy doing anything that uh detracted from her you know helping out at the at the shop so you were doing like illegal underground uh snail battles yeah and like the snails do they really do battle it is like low level cockfighting i would say and of course, Legzy's uh, number one favorite snail was uh, Gastro Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Gastro Todd was good, but for Regina's money, uh, the one she was always the proudest of getting in a blind box was uh, Creamy Kyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which was one that emitted an actually pretty delicious cream sauce. Uh, wherever it went. Oh whoa! <laughs> it was like ba- it was like Alfredo. Yeah, it was kind of like an Alfredo, a creamy Alfredo sauce. It absolutely ruined her room, but man, she had some good pasta. <laughs> I think the the titular snail is, of course, Horace, Horace the horrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's up there. He's just kind of like your standard vanilla snail. He's like the Pikachu of the franchise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how you lure the kids in. Then you hit them with some real horrible snails. <laughs> 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 All right, so y'all. Um, you make your way over to Rebecca Estes's horrible snails. You know, it, it's over by the Annie Anns. Uh, so you kind of at all, you all have to double back. You all meet up there. And outside, you do see, you see Lego Gimli himself. You see old Hollis Court. Oh my gosh. I recognize that that beady <laughs> head anywhere. <laughs> uh, I guess Hollis is just a big fan of, uh, that. he's spending all of his uh, his newfound earnings on horrible snails. He can't get enough of those just gross, slimy guys. <laughs> That's embarrassing. He's so late to the trend. No one's even doing horrible snails anymore. <laughs> He's keeping this shop in business. But what happens is he sees y'all coming. He runs inside. And before you can enter the store, he grabs Rebecca Estes herself, the, the <gasps> tiny little witch uh, proprietor of the store. Oh, no. Rebecca. Oh. And he is holding her hostage. Oh, dang. Like, does he have a weapon or something? Yes. He has... Um. <laughs> I, I had a weapon prepared, but I feel like it needs to be snail themed now. <laughs> <laughs> assault gun. Yep, there it is. He's got assault gun. <laughs> oh no! I want. I'm trying to make Rebecca look uh, snail like as well. I guess she's got like a big. There we go. Yeah, give her a big back. <laughs> yep, she's got a big back. This is a thick witch. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a delicious sandwich. Ba- I would baby, eat. <laughs> baby got back. Mm. So you can see he's threatening her with salt. Oh, it's not. It's It's just just salt. (laughs) It's a salt shaker. This is a shakedown. (laughs) (laughs) Excuse me. Do that in the appropriate voice, please. Oh, no. It's a shakedown. Jonathan, please. This is a serious moment. (laughs) I've been dead for centuries. All of this is just amusing to me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, let me finish up this drawing. I'm trying to figure out how a snail witch works. No, that's good. It, yeah. I think you're on it. I think you got it. Uh, yeah. Split the hat. Split the hat into two antenna. Oh, yeah. Good call. Thank you. She's got the little antenna up here. So, yeah, she's just, I guess she is just a snail witch, which is like, honestly, for off the top of our heads, pretty good. That's, pr- that's Yeah, that's pretty good. It definitely should be more of a thing in real life. Snail witch, not to be confused with snail witches, which is just this, the sandwich shop that uh, takes a very long time to prepare <laughs> your food. <laughs> their, logo, their slogan is, we're slow. <laughs> their slogan. <laughs> their slogan. <laughs> they do go slow. We do go slow, though. <laughs> <laughs> snail witches, we do go slow, though. For when you're not in a hurry. <laughs> That's right next door, and that's where um, that's where all the snails that nobody bought go. Yeah, they just become uh, sandwich artists. <laughs> yeah, they're working there and then also preparing snails. It's very, uh, it's very macabre. Okay, so what happens is um, you see Hollis threatening the snail witch, uh, old Rebecca Estes herself. He backs into the store and says, "I'm not." Uh, wait, did we give a voice to this guy? No, he, <laughs> no, we, you're he, about to. He needs a voice. <laughs> okay. Doing a lot of voices this episode. Uh, you know what? It, Lego Gimli. Let me do just like a real dumb Scottish voice. Why not? Oh, God. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not coming out unless my demands are met. <laughs> you stay back. Regina's just cracking up at his voice. <laughs> 
Why, why are you laughing at my voice? It's like, I'm sorry, what? Rox is just really confused. Are you just speaking <laughs> like at the back of your throat? What's going on? This is how I speak. My head's a big bead. <laughs> What's wrong with my voice? It sounds great. <laughs> sure, dude. I go on a lot of dates. It's fine. I bet that's true. It is. Do you guys, uh, do you think Tiffany would like a mace? There's a lot of people. <laughs> we don't sell me. I'm not the store clerk. <laughs> I think some of the snails have maces for tails. Yeah, some of them do have maces for tails. You're not getting the point here. Do you think she'd like that, though? She might like it more than just a normal mace. I don't know who Tiffany is. <laughs> I feel like magical blart seeing a crime being committed in a mall is just, like, <laughs> rearing up, and Legsy has to sort of sort of uh, soothe him like yes. a horse. He's fucking ready to go. So yeah. Um, Whoa there. <laughs> <laughs> Hollis recedes into the store and says, there's a lot of really dumb children in here that didn't get the memo about <laughs> horrible snails not being a thing anymore. And they're all my hostages. Oh no. That's right. Well, I mean, they are dumb children. Yeah. They are dumb children, but they're children nonetheless. And Hollis Quirt, has taken them and the snail witch uh, hostage inside Rebecca Estes's horrible snails. Next week on the show is going to be a hostage situation. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. Wow. The way this is going to work is um, we're going to let the audience decide how you're going to handle it. There's going to be four options. You can either rush in and attack. You can negotiate with Hollis. You can call for backup. Or you can sneak around back and ambush. Oh, boy. I'm going to let the audience decide how we handle this situation so that we can avoid uh, Rebecca Estes getting the salt, getting assaulted. <laughs> yep, there it is. Uh, yeah, and for the action item for next time, uh, I would uh, love if you could give me some dumb things for Hollis to shout in his very dumb voice that I guess we've decided is uh, a Scottish man with a cold. We're Shrek. Yeah, we're Shrek. <laughs> Strong, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, cool. That's going to be our episode. Uh, great work. I hope you enjoyed your your mall crawl. I promise that the story is picking up from here. We're not going to spend the rest of it just slowly acquiring items uh, in <laughs> fantasy <laughs> suburbia. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, we're trying to get these out quicker than we have in the past. But thank you for bearing with us. We love you all. Uh, and we're very sorry. 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 <laughs>